This month, several Power 5 contenders got to participate in an event almost all of them missed in 2020, the Spring Game. And the new names that you know include Ohio State defensive end Jack Sawyer, who was awarded sack after sack in his spring game debut, Miami freshman quarterback Jake Garcia, who hit 19 of 25 for 252 with two TDs, Alabama redshirt freshman QB Bryce Young, who completed 25 of 44 for 333 passing yards with a TD, and USC quarterbacks Jackson Dart and Miller Moss got to showcase their talent. And that was just one Saturday in April. As any recruit Nick will tell you, spring game hits different when you've been following a kiddo since his sophomore year of high school. It's not that you don't know he's good. He is. He's probably a blue chip recruit, too. It's that you want to see him in your school's colors. And while there's a lot of hype around spring games, particularly because in recent years they have become marquee recruiting events on the calendar, they're usually something of a letdown. The playbooks are colored Vanilla. Many of the stars we saw burst into brightness in an otherwise dark 2020 sat out these glorified practices. Better to not risk injury than, you know, come up lame holding a knee with a non-contact injury. And then, you know, court the chance of missing the upcoming season for a scrimmage no one truly believes has any sway whatsoever over kickoff come September. But how we have missed this even as we've seen an unprecedented amount of college football this spring. And while we can all appreciate the FCS playoff taking place where a national champ will be crowned, I look forward to my team and many of your teams featuring a new class of freshman enrollees to the ranks. And that's what spring football is truly about, especially for me. You want to see that dude cracking against the first team. You want to see how deep the roster is likely to be come fall camp. Just as the early enrollee has changed the game, speeding up the maturation process of freshmen, we're about to see another change, though this one is happening just once. Last August, the NCAA Board of Governors approved a landmark measure proposed by its Division I Council. The measure allows for an extra year of eligibility for all the athletes due to the pandemic. Crucially, eligibility was extended even to those athletes who did not choose to opt out of the 2020 season. That means players who were seniors last year received an unprecedented fifth year of eligibility in some cases. That also means players who might have been forced to enter the NFL draft or find a different day job now have one more year to show the NFL personnel that they can compete amongst the best in the world. That also means you're going to hear the term super senior in 2021 as much as you've heard arm talent, RPO, or 11 personnel in the past five. Super seniors will not count toward a program's 85 scholarship players. That means we're likely to see the most competitive year of football we've ever witnessed in the more than 150-year history of the sport. And chances are, your team has more than a couple. As of February 28th, the Associated Press reported, Illinois has the most, with a whopping 17 super seniors joining up with Brett Bielema in his year one in Champaign. My alma mater, Tulsa, has 14 of its roster as super seniors. And that includes the Golden Hurricanes top pass catcher, Keelan Stokes. New Mexico has 14 too. So does Hawaii, Arizona State, and USC. Rutgers has 13, including the Big Ten's 2020 leader in tackles per game. Buffalo has 13 too. So does Colorado State, Appalachian State, and Troy. Florida State has 10, including Georgia transfer Jermaine Johnson, who was the number one ranked recruit among junior college players in 2019, and former UCF quarterback Mackenzie Milton. Texas Tech has 10. So does Georgia Southern. So does Georgia State, Louisiana Tech, Houston, Minnesota, San Diego State, Oregon State, and Cal. Pittsburgh has 12, including four-year starting quarterback Kenny Pickett. Middle Tennessee has 12, too. So does Missouri, Coastal Carolina, Texas State, UAB, Eastern Michigan, San Jose State, and Fresno State. Temple has 11. So does Tennessee, Arkansas State, SMU, Ohio, Western Michigan, Nevada, UNLV, Arizona, and Utah. 
Before Title IX became law, there was no such thing as a scholarship limit in football. Then, in 1973, the NCAA imposed a limit of 105 scholarships for football. That number was dropped again in 1978 to 95 for what were then called Division I-A, now FBS programs, and limited what were called Division I-AA, now FCS programs, to 63. And we haven't seen these many players in the FBS in 30 years, since 1992, in fact, when the NCAA dropped the scholarship limit from 95 to 85. That means in a normal year, there are just over 11,000 players on scholarship at the FBS level. This year, though, there are 1,046 super seniors on FBS rosters across 130 programs. That means there are more than 12,000 players on scholarship at the FBS level. So 11.5% of the FBS is not only comprised of super seniors, but of super skilled labor. Remember, the older the player, the more he's probably played football, the better he probably is at playing football. It means there are not just more bodies, but bigger, stronger ones too. Because the game has changed. And it's changed so much with true freshmen arriving ready to play, offensive football embracing the pass at levels seldom seen in the 20th century, the sheer number of resources growing exponentially to field championship football teams. You just know a remarkably active transfer portal contributes to this, and so I have no doubt that this is going to be the best season of college football we've ever seen. And that is cause to rejoice.